Alrighty, we are live everybody. Welcome back to another Sunday on Evil's channel for VTM. Uh Tracy will get here when he gets here, as usual. You guys know you know you guys know what it is by now about the whole uh He's here. Oh he's here. Oh look, the cow shit man's here. <laughs> no one can see it but us, Tracy. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> I gotta I gotta put your thing in the thing. You know the thing over there in the thing. Or anyone can even hear you besides the people in this call. <laughs> Hello. Now Hello. I can hear. Now we're good. Well, the the stream can hear you now. We could hear you before. Good timing, like... trash. Good timing. You've literally just walked in the door, haven't you? Huh? What? And you've literally just walked in the door, haven't you? Were you just woken up? Fuck off. I work. <laughs> I wish I could sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, pretty much just walked in the door. All good. We're just getting started. So you're, you've got a little, little bit of time to relax. Holly, what's up? How you doing? Uh, welcome on everyone. And thank you very much for 28 months. Resub to Mr. Baz. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support, everybody. Um, as I said... Another, another Vampire Masquerade show tonight. Um, Aaron may make an appearance sometime later on in the session uh, too, so that'll be good. Uh, we have a full house to, to finish out the uh, session tonight. Um, we are gonna we are gonna be finishing at about 10 o'clock, so we're only gonna be running for a couple of hours tonight, so I'm not gonna muck around too much with uh, announcements and stuff at the start. I'll do a bunch of stuff at the end um, once we've gotten through everything. So we'll just turn it over to our storyteller and we'll get right into it and uh, thank you Mina, for the reason another another 28 months look at that all these 28 months is in here you guys have been around for long times appreciate it very much guys and let's get into tonight's session with our storyteller oh that's my cue that's right. you so quick recap quick quick overview of last week uh we were emit emit okay that's a good start we were amidst the chaos of the announcement that Echo was the new prince. Aaron had to leave early to attend other Gangrel matters. Congratulations were given to Echo from the council members, and Isaac asks the council for numbers when they attack the SI buildings with serious people. Uh, Zane awoke on a slab with everyone's favorite kindred, Jeremy, which you guys call Tim, but his, his name that you did find out is Jeremy, just so you know, um, helping him out, getting him out of tour for. Um, but of course, there were other his things. His name is that, now Tim, uh, Timary, just so you know. You can call him whatever, you guys can call him whatever <laughs> you need. Um, <laughs> we know who he is. <laughs> but of course, other things that, that Jeremy wanted Zane to do in order to remain alive, as he explained, and then disappeared. The Just the Cars led the rest of the group, the rest of the hounds, to the door where Zane was. But it was jammed, and Jax managed to pull us off its hinges and allowed the group in. As a surprise, the uh, just the cars saw that Zane was awake, but they were unaware of how, and they had no idea who Tim slash Jeremy was when asked. The group then gathered at the Gangster's Paradise Bar to organize attack forces to talk with the council in... Um, what you guys assume was private. I always say something to leave you thinking if it was or not. And then you uh, discuss matters and plans while Echo and Isaac moved away for a private conversation. Echo filled in Isaac on some of the finer details, and I think a few of you during the night filled in Isaac on other details that maybe he was missing on. During the time of Echo and Isaac's conversation of a private time, Pip announced that he'd found all the politics and talking rather boring as he read a book. Oh, <laughs> Jax asked Pip if he could focus on Jeremy to see what he could get. And Pip did get a flash of imagery running through his mind. So this is right where we're going to pick up on a dark, cloudy, quiet Sunday evening, which is actually now Monday morning at around 4 a.m. with not long to go before you guys have to hit the casket. We are still at the Gangster's Paradise Speakeasy Bar. Most of the patronage has left, gone home, taken the last drink, the taxis, the Ubers, 
All except for the hounds. And I would say Eko and Isaac are coming back from their private meeting with maybe the pint that you had had to get a done and dusted your choice. So to speak, that is the pint. <laughs> Jax and Zane, you're watching Purpose. He recovers from whatever scenery it was that he saw. I leave it up to you. You good, Pip? You back? I mean, leave him alone. He'll talk soon. Do you ever get that time when you're like, you think you, you know someone and then you realize you're carrying a stranger around in your bag? All the time. Shh. The, Taylor, the, the print, he's, he's sort of like a, a living bag of blood for, for Jeremy? You're saying that you saw Leslie, Leslie Taylor. He was all, he was all chained up and and he, he wasn't moving or, or doing anything, but he was he's bleeding into a into a bucket in in an old eighty style house. He lied to me. Who he lied? said he killed him. Timmy. Timmy said he killed him. But it also explained how I came back. Maybe, I think. Possibly. Then tie on Prince Juice. Yes. Hang on a minute. What? Pip. Are you part of this conversation? No. Keep talking. What? I'm going to punch you, Zane. <laughs> I really am. Just give me a second. Second. <laughs> oh, Do wait, you know when old. what you saw was? But... Uh, no, no, it could be now. It could have been then. It could be soon. It might have been before. I don't know. Pip. Give me the first roll of the night. Give me oh, give me a resolve awareness to see if you can get a feeling of maybe the time. Now, just for clarification oh. for me, uh, while he's doing that, how many nights ago was Prince Taylor supposedly... Or did he supposedly meet final death on the night? How, how many nights ago was the attack on the Elysium? Was what, it was like almost a week ago, wasn't it? At a standard guess, I think it's close to a week. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. About sort of six coming up, sort of that week, so six or seven days. Yeah. Yep. So four successes with a bestial fa failure. And four shit. successes is a success, so the bestial failure doesn't matter. You get the feeling. It's hard to tell with your visions whether it's future, past, now, but you do get a strong feeling that maybe, maybe a day or two, it's how the vision felt. Glimpses of maybe a calendar on the wall give you that idea, that feeling. A digital clock, maybe something, something ticked you off, tipped you off. So yeah, you'd say a day or two at best. It's not not going to happen it has has happened but not long ago prince well former prince supposedly met final death which is what you guys witnessed what a week ago give or take so again that question comes up Pip. who the hell are you carrying around in your lunchbox because if it isn't the prince, and it's not Jeremy, who is and it? That really misses with the symbology of it too. I need something else to put this in. <laughs> Echo, Can't stand here. Echo and Isaac, you would be arriving back about now if you 
choose to. Echo would have got one of the waitresses to bring out this wagon with a, like a little child's wagon with a cover over it to the table. No problem. The waitress is bringing it forth for you. A nice uh, silvered wagon with uh, detailed motifs around the edges of the legs and things. I, uh, I had this made to uh, cheer you up, Pip. Um, since I think it's absolutely disgusting that you carry what is, it? what is it? What is it? What's on the books? What is the books? On your person. So I got you a home for them, and I took the cover off, and it is an exact replica of the gangster's paradise in like a dollhouse with a plastic cover over the front, and there are six, six roaches crawling over the little fake tables and things like that. Ta-da! You can take it home with you. Because do do any of them have, have their bar degree? It's important to have a proper liquor. Well, there's six of us and there's six roaches, so I thought, you know, that's the one you in can, the little... You can see Nathan peering over from his seat as he pulls his jacket on, straightens his tie, and he comes forward and he says, I don't wish to be rude, of course, but... <sighs> We're not we're, keeping them here, Nathan. That is good. We're trying to run an establishment of some sort of high quality, and those are not. No. You're taking it home with you. But, yeah, but the qu quality roaches. But, oh, it's a quality very, roach hotel, clearly. Yeah. As long as they're not in here, and yeah. Nathan sort of, says, as he straightens his jacket up a little more, does up a button and says... It is time for me to leave. I'm getting to a point where I'm going to need to sleep. Uh, one of the others will lock up after you. And he looks, checks at his watch and says, though we're all getting to that time. And you see him exit with a bow to the prince. Bow's back. Zane, have you eaten enough? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Speaking of food, we got, we got more, more, any more? Pep, how are you feeling? You were a little hungry earlier. Maybe uh, I, I could eat, but not the slop that no. Mr. Rivera eats. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think many of us like the the uh, way that Zane prefers to eat. Pip, do you have anywhere you, like, prefer to go? I mean, I can run, I mean, I'm heading back into the city if you want to go somewhere before you go home. You used to go to the library. But maybe not, not the library now. I mean, you're a, you like to... The sleepers, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Mm. Like to not disturb them. Yeah, I'm, then I'm, they, then I'm, they don't know and they don't get upset and, and then hopefully they don't die. Cause it's really sad when people die. I know a couple of places if you're, if you're willing to allow me to show you. Uh, okay, Mr. Spencer. Um... Yeah, sure. So, uh, Jackson will stand and bow to Echo, uh, a prince. Uh, I think I'll take Pip to get some food and then take him home and head that way myself. Mm -hmm. um, are we to meet back here tomorrow or? I think it's a good idea. Neutral ground. Uh, tomorrow evening then. Zane, do you need somewhere? You need, do you need a ride? Or have you got your own? I'm good. Hang on, am I? Yep, I'm good. Okay. And I'll uh, wait for Pip to collect his things. No worries. And as you guys head out the door of the Gangster's Paradise to wherever you're going, we'll catch up with you shortly. Just uh, before we do, 
Yep. Oh, is that good? I particularly want to wait until Zane leaves. I'm assuming because he's still full of holes, because <laughs> he hasn't he hasn't healed. Is there a chance there happens to be any trickles of blood from the wound seeping out? While he's still there, or that you're looking at him physically, or you're looking at like the chair? No, no I'm looking up? like where he sat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, wondering if there's any trickles I, of blood that happen to be on the seat or where he's touched. So I'm going to say there's no need for a, a dice roll here because you are all creatures of the blood and you can smell human blood and you can smell the vitae of a vampire. And so, yes, there are minor traces. Okay. Minor traces where he was sitting. So he's going to wait until everyone's out of sight and he's going to dip his finger in the blood and he's going to lick it and he's going to use a taste of blood. Nice. All right. So it's a free cost. Uh, resolve blood sorcery. Cool. So... So what he's looking in particular is because of the mention of what has woken him up, um, he, Isaac is going to, with the mixture of blood, he's seeing if there's going to be a chance of being able to possibly figure out um, the potency of the source of bringing Zane back from Torpor. Okay. So give me, yeah, that, give me that resolve uh, blood potency, I think it was. Uh, blood sorcery, yeah, resolve blood sorcery. Yep. One, two, three, four, eight successes with a crit. Whew. So you're looking at, and I'll just have to get my notes out in front of me because I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, you're looking at a blood potency of seven. Now, my question to Isaac how well does Isaac know the previous prince? How well does he know Marco? How well does he know the Justicars, the council? He would know of them um, with Isaac, um, particular roles with needing to go out and search for what is required from whether it's uh, the mortal world or the kindred world, um, he definitely would make sure that um, he makes himself known to the prince entering the city. Um, so definitely he would be have at least made himself um, known to Prince Taylor. Okay. And because of the blood sorcery and the Tremere, you guys have a fairly good idea of give or take roughly who is who when it comes to potency of blood. Yep. So you would know that Leslie would, should, and could probably be higher blood potency than that that you've just tasted. Yep. Would, would the taste give me an indication of the generation? I would say that's a high roll. So I'm going to, I'm going to allow that. Yes. I, I would say, You've got a ninth. You would, yeah. You pick up ninth generation. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. So that that that's kind of what Isaac was kind of looking for. It's kind of 
trying to figure out what well what has been given to Zane. Yeah. Um and and with that he'll just sort of collect his things and and um walk out with the rest of the coterie. Um no going problem. towards uh Echo and Sam's vehicle. As you do, you notice a couple of the waitresses are wiping tables down, wiping chairs down, and one of them comments, oh, not blood on the chairs again? This is the second time this week. And she's wiping it down <laughs> as you exit. Uh, is there anything anyone else would like to do before you all turn in and, and get to a new evening? Uh, Jackson uh, want to take Pip to get fed. And Correct. probably feed himself at some point before heading back to his um, his haven. But did, he okay. does want to have a conversation with Pip. As well. No worries. It's we're in no rush at all. You guys can do whatever you need. So, are you, Pip's in your car? Mm-hmm. So we'll load, uh, we'll load the wagon with the Roach Motel on on the back seat. Put a so, seatbelt <laughs> around it so it doesn't get broken. <laughs> so I'll just get a, a view in here. So Zane, are you going to do anything? before the end of the night as well, before tuning in? No, I'm just going back to my little hidey hole at Fort Knox. No worries. <laughs> and Echo, did you have anything else you wish to do? Echo will probably go to Isaac's haven to do that ritual because she knows it's un without any prying eyes kind of thing. Right, yep. Okay, sweet ass. So... Uh, we can jump back to you two for that ritual, unless you want to just keep that private as well. That's up to Isaac. Well, I mean, it's going to reveal information, so I don't mind doing that on um, for, for the show and tell of everybody. <laughs> that's that's, that's what we want. purely up to you, Echo, if it's part of your backstory or part of that's... stuff that the rest of us don't need to know. That's purely up to you. We'll, we'll definitely role play it out. It makes sense <laughs> to me. So we'll go uh, Jack's first, Jack's Pip. No worries. So Jackson would take him to an area where he knows that there's not like, no nowhere where there's junkies or anything like that, but uh, homeless people that generally would fall asleep on, like under a bridge or in a, in a shop window or an alley somewhere where... I mean, he doesn't want Pip to go into a pretty... Like, he doesn't want to take him into a nasty part of town, but... Yeah, this you're place talking like is, slum-style areas. Yeah, well, probably not even that. Just, like, more central city where some, like, homeless would be... Sort of find a dark alley somewhere to crawl under a, a cardboard box or something and just find sleep. Um, okay. It might be a, like, 24-7 laundromat where someone might have fallen asleep as well. Just out-of-the-way areas. So you do have a clue of areas like that. You guys... Um, I, mean, I normally hunt in those areas myself as well, so... Yeah, you know where to look. Uh, looking around for those areas, not a hassle. Finding uh, a perfect or a close match to what he's looking for, someone asleep in a yeah. hiding place, will get you both to make a... Uh, just a what's awareness roll, please. Oh, boy. Ooh, that's good. Four dice, four successes. Very good. I hope we're rolling those hungers in there too, people. Yes, it was successes on both hunger die. True. For a change. I got three sixes. Four and three. All on the blood dice. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, both of you, as, as Jackson sort of pulls over, and I like the idea you mentioned of a laundromat type space. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's exactly what you find, a laundromat that's, not too bad, you know, central city. It's got a, it's a big sort of open space, but some of the lights are flicking the old um, fluorescent style long lights. There's one or two of them not going properly, so it's a dimly lit area. And as you sort of both pop out of the car, you would both notice um, there's a there's a camera inside, but you can see that there's a person just fast asleep and as the tumble dryer goes behind them and they're partially asleep. And right where they're sitting is completely out of the camera view basically the camera's above them looking okay. out and they are under it so you can see there it's a pretty good place they're in like the darkest spot of the um laundromat no real hassle to get at them and they are fast asleep i'd uh, i'd sort of pull up and say to pip well is there 
a candidate there for you. I know it's probably not as fancy as the library, but it'll serve your purpose for this evening until you can establish um, better areas to do this. And I'm willing to help you as well. I mean, kind of have to. I think they'll taste of laundry detergent. Uh, I, unless, I, I unless a, they've been drinking it, probably not. I had, had a bad trip once when I was echo. Not, I, not, not laundry detergent. I have something, and I, I'm going to use Ghost in the Machine for the first time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> to turn the camera off. Or make it so the camera can't see me. So, uh, <laughs> it's fucking, oh, so good. I love it. Right. I'm, I'm just bringing up my Excel spreadsheet with Ghost in the Machine. Here we go. So, uh, f no cost for you, that's, I believe. Yeah. It makes me appear invisible or masked on live stream. So, if someone watches it back later. Yeah, so you basically, as you're walking in, you spot the camera, said camera, and you know as you concentrate on the on the Vitae, like they always say they're different, on the Vitae in your system. <laughs> I'm saying Vitae, right? So many consonants and uh, so many vowels, not consonants. So you just concentrate on the Vitae in your system. You're not quite rousing the blood enough to have to make any sort of check, but enough that you know that your face is going to be blurred, your body itself is going to be blurred on any electronic footage that may capture you and wander into the shop and do your thing jackson would hang out towards the front of it just to again more of a lookout type deal make sure no one else comes in um well, like I... and for this point he'd throw up dawn like he'd just hang out out the front of the, the store like i say it's it's you know after 4 30 yeah. in the a.m now and there's just, just about no one around it's the oddest of things laundromats are all nighters yeah, yeah. a lot of places here um people do shift work but it's the oddest thing to have someone running a tumble dryer at this time of night and they're just sort of falling asleep on this bench in front of it must be soothing for them like the sound of the ocean um Pip, you just really need to be quite quiet and that's about the main thing here so <sighs> You you're, can give me your choice of what you want to roll here to advance on this person. Um, I would say it, maybe it's a dex based skill. Yeah, I've got I've got points in stealth, but more for breaking. And I haven't broken in. I've just walked through the door. That's that's true. <laughs> um, yeah. So give me a a dex stealth or anything you think would work better. If you if you think you can think of a different way to go about this, um, you are doing a feed which you are reasonably new at, couple of weeks ish new at. Um, yeah, dick stealth, unless you can think of something better. But so the zero a, on a D ten is, is ten. Yeah, so I've got two criticals Whew. and two, so six out of five dice. And, uh, <laughs> and this is on blood dice too. Um, yeah, I've got a critical on one of the blood dice and. One of the black dice has the 10 on it. Okay. Tell me, you describe to me how you go about this to begin with as I just check my book. So it's sort of like look at the person in front of the, the dryer and sort of decide that the person at the counter is better. And I think if Jackson was looking, he'd see pip try to do something and his face changes and then it just reverts back and he's like damn it and he walks up behind um the person at the counter asleep and sort of just shifts in and sort of like tries to find a bare piece of skin and okay you know, drink until he uh is feeling a bit better so as well as that because you've rolled a critical win and one of the uh, crits is on the blood dice this is what we class as a messy critical. So what Jack sees, Jax, you see him wander in there, confident, feeling good about himself. He moves towards this human, looks up at the camera, and it's almost for a moment you see his body and his face shimmer. He looks almost just like he could be any passerby. He doesn't look like Pip anymore. Not for a brief moment. He just looks like an average Joe that you wouldn't really take any notice of. But then Pip bears his fangs heavily and drives down into this human lying down asleep on this bench. 
pip, you're going to feed, but you're not going to want to stop. You're going to have to give me your willpower. Jax, you can see this happening. I won't make you roll to see this. You can see he is gone for gold. This is untainted, clean, clear blood. He is hungry. So willpower, willpower no all of them? Yeah, uh, so all your willpower, but no blood dice. Yeah. So five, because they got the, a critical and one, so five. Okay, so gone from one extreme to the other, you have succeeded. And therefore, as you're drawing down on this creature, you're going to you're going to get two um, points of hunger abated doing this, but you're going to bring this person to the brink of death. And this person's in a hoodie trying to keep warm on a cool night. And as you've got sunk your teeth in and you feel the warmth of their blood and you can feel the heartbeat within your mouth, the blood pumping through, you actually manage to get a hold of yourself. Jax, you do see him going for gold, but do you step in? Um, I would start to. I would definitely, like, if I see him, would, would I really notice that he's struggling? Uh, has he got his back to me? Sort of what's the positioning here? Uh, yeah, he would probably have, Pip would have his back to you, yes. So would I even notice that he's struggling to stop? That's probably the, more of the point here. I think you would notice that he's a bit more confident and, and maybe more vicious than what you were expecting. Uh, I would make a move to see if he's okay, definitely. So, Pip, like I say, the willpower roll was good. You managed to pull yourself free. This person is more unconscious than what they were, but they are not going to die this night. As you keep the wound clean, give it that small saliva off your tongue as you lick it, closing what part of the wounds you can. You are feeling pretty good, and like I say, you've, you've gotten rid of those two hunger points, which I believe leaves you at one now. Yeah. And then he goes into his bag and he grabs the book he was reading that he's just finished. He's like, it, I hope you've got the other book. This is the, the third book. But, and he sort of just puts it on the, the desk and then like. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the book he was reading? Um, so this book is Bogan and the Curse of the Magical Stocks by <laughs> Flo Gessler. Oh, no. <laughs> And so with that, you leave the book on the, uh, like on the milling bench in the middle where people get their suds and their, their um, you know, they, they put the coins in to get any of the soap powder dispensing units they want or any of the uh, detergent fabric softener. <laughs> Here's this book sitting there waiting for this person to wake up. And with that, do you exit the laundromat? Yeah, so I'll um, take another look back at him. I'm worried that, I might have gone a little bit too far and then sort of look at um, Jackson. He, I'm like, uh, he tastes a little bit better than I was expecting. Um, I, I think he's all right, though. It, it happens. You, I mean, sometimes you're a little carried away. You can see the chest of the figure rising and falling. She's still breathing. Yeah, seems like you did okay. Shame about the book, though. Maybe I can bring the other two around. Well, where are we going now? Oh. Well, it is, it's getting late. Well, early. I think it's time we probably got you home. I think. I, yeah, and I forgot to thank the prince for i didn't think she liked the roaches um and, and now they've got this nice new house to live in and thank her tomorrow it was a generous gift yeah come on Pip. let's let's get going um and while we're in the car as a help sort of get him back to the vehicle yep um Pip. Um, I I think I have to apologise to you. I've not really oh. honoured a request from the former prince. 
and and the sheriff. And I I apologize for that. If I I'd, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time with you. That's okay, Mr. Spencer. We're we're all friends, and that 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 means everything to me. It it's okay. Some sometimes sometimes things don't go the way you think they're gonna go. It, as I said, it happens definitely. Um, but what I mean is is the Leslie, former Prince Taylor, and Marco both essentially tasked me with looking after you and teaching you how to survive this life. As, as you are new, you're, you're young to, to the dark and to the kindred world. I mean, it did get pretty bad that time where you weren't there and had those bikies and I thought I was going to die again. Die again. Take it to home. Again, I apolog again, I apologize for not doing what I was asked to do. But a lot of other things uh, sort of I'm dealing with at the moment and, and things that just don't add up. And tonight with your premonition, it's, it's another thing that just doesn't make sense. It's all very strange, things that don't normally happen. Uh, these things that I have discovered and I'm afraid that if I talk to the wrong person that this may mean the end of this life for me. I'm not quite sure who I can trust right now. We're, we're all friends, right, Mr. Spencer? Like, and, and I know Zane, like, he can be really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, dense. Um, stupid. <laughs> he can be really stupid, but I, I think he means well. And you haven't hit him lately, so, like, he maybe. Yeah, uh, I mean, again, that's, my temper gets the better of me from time to time, and... Zane just kind of gets on my nerves a lot. But I think he does that with everybody. Uh, they, you guys handle it so much better than me. Um, what I'm getting at, I think, Pip, is... What do you know of... I mean, how do you feel about Zane? Like, other than he's annoying and that he's stupid sometimes. I, I like Mr. Rivera. He, he's not got a lot of self-preservation, so I don't think. I agree. Um, I can, <laughs> as you can see with the, the holes that he had in his body recently and being exploded time before that, Losing his hand, that doing time he got his yeah, yeah, that was that was a good one. I mean, I yeah. I must admit, I had a bit of a chuckle to that. Um, but uh, and I guess I'm I'm going to take a, a a risk here with you, Pip, because I think you are new enough to this world that you're untainted by the politics of it yet. Yeah, there's too much politics, to be honest. And you still have a strong tie to your your humanity. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard in the beginning to deal with that, cope with it, to deal with what you've become. Oh yeah, I need to. I need to get something for Sam. He's so angry at me. I haven't, I haven't been a good friend to Sam. Sam is human, still. Yeah. And you've, have you, have you not spoken to her since your embrace, or 
no, no, I, I, I tried. I'm not, I'm not very good at talking to people. And then, and then she was in danger. And then, and then hopefully she's all right. I, I gave her a cockroach. I mean, she didn't know that I gave her a cockroach, but I, mean, I don't I've... think she'd want a cockroach. I'm sure that the, the cockroach will keep an eye on it for you. I would, I would hope so. Yeah, I think Van Diemen's always, always watching. I believe he is. And just on that note, Jax, I'll come back to your feed yep. shortly. Eco and Isaac, we'll work with your ritual, if that's good with you guys. Perfect. I... Um, used to Isaac's haven, the bookcases, the table, the elegant couch. I pass my hands along a goblet and say, A pint, you say. And then I'm gonna bite. Yes. And I want to start to drain. What are you gonna do with the information when you have it? Question is, what do you want me to do with the information once I have it? I want at least somebody to know the truth. I'm tired of fighting all the time. Uh, well, I hate to say it, but as you said to Mr. Spencer, maybe you shouldn't have become kindred. Ha! Touche. But understand. And he's just watching as the silver goblet is slowly being being filled. Um, the Tremere have always been Ones in the past who get whatever information we want when we want. That's not difficult to do. Sway our reputation. At best. Sends fear into the other clans because we could do literally anything we want now. The fact that you're coming to me with this, you want me to know your secret. You know me. This is something that I will respect. However, be aware that me knowing this, and he kind of leans in, sort of quietly whispers into, what's that target on my back? Yes, it does. And I'm well aware. Well then, it seems like whatever I, information I get out of this may help. to find the answer that you tasked me to do when you first met me. So one reason why I'm, well, two reasons, and it's looking at Echo, two reasons why I'm back. And both reasons are sitting in that chair right now. Every time I use my power I get closer to 
Oblivion. I felt it. It's not just the beast. It's just the darkness. Kind of fitting how your book talks about the abyss. I mean, there's a lot of fiction in that book, too. Hmm. Yes. Lots of fiction. It's... Lots. Hmm. Mom? Of course. Hmm? Of course. Hmm? Lots of fiction. Hmm? Well, maybe this bit of fiction you can add into your next chapter. And he extends his hand to sort of grass at the goblet, not taking it away, but he's just waiting for Echo to release her grip on it. I slowly take my fingers off, seal my bite. And then... This will take a while, so if you want to go and rest. You don't want me to see. Oh, I have no problem in you seeing. I'm just saying, you know, we're getting close to morning. I'll wait. All right. <laughs> and he will then um, cut open his wrist and... Um, drain some of his blood into uh, the goblet as well and he then goes to takes a, cu takes a couple of steps back and um, and starts to um, he's going to do a rouse check first Good call. I was also going to call for one. <laughs> Which is a success. Thank God. There's, there's, a, lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of vitae in the room Oof. at this moment in time. Just that one thing, true. one thing, Isaac. As yes. the blood mingles and you activate rousing your blood, mm -hmm. what does the magic in the goblet look like? So, um, for a moment... The moment Isaac's blood touches or starts to mix with um, Echo's blood, it slowly starts to bubble and like just festering bubbles, like little bubbles. And Echo can sort of hear a pop and a pop and a pop as the blood starts to just appears to be boiling, but it's not. And Isaac then closes his eyes and he's putting like he's putting his hand over the, the lip of the goblet and he starts incantating um, uh, arcane words and this carries on for the next hour or so. Um, and as as the incantation goes on, the blood sort of turns into a whirlpool just at the bar, at the, at the, just at the top base of his um, hand there. And it's sort of just swirling and swirling and swirling. And the more it goes on, Isaac is sort of kind of slowly twitching as the, the 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 ritual he's casting he's trying to draw the information out of uh, out of echo's blood and at the end of it it's sort of like it all just flops down and the bubbling stops and the 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 tempest in the cup just slowly settles down and as that tempest of blood settles you can see the swirl of blood beginning to rest it's almost like like you say it was, it was almost like it was boiling even though it wasn't but 
Ico, you can see almost like a hot road on a summer's day, the the heat waves coming from it, though there's nothing to feel if you could feel. But you can see what seems to be like heat waves or radiation waves coming from it, and they seem to... Neither of you breathe your undead entities, but these heat waves seem to draw into Isaac, through his nostrils, into his eyes, ears... As almost if it's, as if he'd taken a deep breath. I hope there's some blood dice in there. <laughs> Always blood dice, my friend. Always blood dice. <laughs> um, I also surged my blood to um, increase my re resolve to an extra one. Okay, no worries. So that is one, two, three, four, and another crit, so eight. Eight. Uh, is that crits on the blood? No, no messy crit. No messy crit. Good to know. Crit with an eight. <laughs> Uh, to say you know, uh, a critical also informs any blood bond on the subject, reagent, or thrall. Okay, sweet. So you get from this... You're trying to... You're trying to deduce how much darkness is in her blood, obviously, as well as more the oblivion, right? The what I say it, it's it's similar to it's essentially a, a larger extension of taste of blood what I did with Zane except for um, uh, that uh, allows the user to learn more details about the subject studied um, assuming the subject is a vampire um, yep. a win on the roll allows the user to learn generation name of the subject as well as the subject sire. Sweet. Okay, so that's easy enough. I got it up in front of me now. That's good. The the first thing you receive from this, so there's a pretty high roll you got as well. And Echo, you can see the look in Isaac's eyes. It's, it's not surprise. He's very well hidden and calm as a as a as I like to say a person, but as a kindred. He doesn't give off a lot of emotion. That's obvious, but you can see understanding. You know her sire, and she may have even mentioned it to you before. Her sire is one of the Sabbat leaders. Uh, I don't know if it would... Does it give you the name of the sire off the bat? It just says you know her sire, right? Uh, as well as the subject sire. So, yes, yeah. I'm assuming by that I would know. Yeah. So, you know through the ritualistic magic that her sire is Arturo Giovanni. He is a Sabbat leader here in Melbourne. You know that her... You know that her blood potency, well, maybe not so much blood potency, you know, you, you'll get that as well, I suppose, but you know that her oblivion is, is very high, very overtaken, and she has a lot of energy in her blood of others that she is connected to. Um, she is not under the control directly of someone by a bond, but she definitely has blood bonded with more than one in the past. So shaking your head, that, it makes you sound that. like a slut vampire. <laughs> <laughs> no, but knowing, knowing, <laughs> knowing that the that that Atreus is the Sabat leader, Isaac would probably know of what that multiple blood bond would mean. C correct. So yes, um, what the Tremere know of the Sabat. Um, some of their rituals tend to do with almost like orgies of the blood, 
it is if we're going to go down that path with um you know she's she's had blood bond with so many <laughs> so so many <laughs> um but you know that's how they it's basically how they keep honest amongst each other by by drinking of each other's blood um they have the ritual has a name uh give me a give me an occult an intelligence occult role please which i think is all right for you as well it was yep. the 70s, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's what? not wrong. It was the 70s. The, 12, the 1270s, the 1370s. <laughs> Would he know what clan I was? That's what I'm wanting to know. Uh, so, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like you'd have a pretty good clue with um, what... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 no! Oh, oh. Floor dice. Floor dice. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 floor dice, it's like floor corn. <laughs> uh, five successes. Yeah, so five successes. You've heard of a ritual called, I believe, the Vinculum, where the Sabbat, whatever clans amongst them, they share in a blood bond with each other. It's not just a group giving it all to one. Everyone shares and they all get information from each other. They all are bound to each other in such a way that it makes it hard for anyone to be a traitor because it's the minute you traitorize, they know to that effect. Um, you would, and from your original role for this, for the sorcery, you would know her oblivion sits reasonably high. I will give you some details and um, DM you the message shortly. Yep. Um, and I believe you will also get her, yeah, I think so. I think you would know her actual clan. Uh, so mm -hmm. I will go through that with you as well. I'll, I'll send those to you in a DM. Yep. Um, if there's anything else you wish to know, let me know. I, I think I've covered most of it. I think that, yeah, we'll cover everything. I think you'll probably clear up a lot of the other things um, in, the, in, in that the, message. Yep. Sweet. And if there's anything else in the message, <clears throat> you just message me back. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll leave it to you guys. I'll give you I, my time is just about out. I'll give you a couple more minutes just to resolve yep. this if you like. So, is that at this point, Isaac will sort of groggily stand up because, like, doing the blood sorcery can take like does take a little bit out of him and whatnot, and and like just the whole process is is very very taxing and. You can see him sort of swaying as he's walking towards like a, a like a sink with the with the goblet, and he sort of topples over. But he puts his hand on um on a book in the on on the bookcase just to steady himself for a moment. Okay, I'll be fine. And he collects himself and he then sort of wanders over to the sink and purposely turns his body so he's not blocking what he's doing and he will tip the blood into the sink and wash it down to show Echo that He's learnt everything he's needed to know. Okay. And as the blood runs down into the sink, you watch as it, it, it sort of almost turns to ash itself as it hits the water, hits the steel, and just smokes away into the black as it drains down the plug hole. Now you know okay. I am... Uh... I'm all alone in this world. I rule almost all, but I have all against me at the same time. And he turns around. He's still, like, he's still groggily. And he wanders back over and, and sits down into the, the, the chair directly across from Echo. My dear. Just because we're part of a clan 
just because we're part of a group, a coterie, a faction, a society. We are all alone. But I made a promise to you all those years ago. And Isaac reaches into his um, coat pocket and pulls out his little little journal, which Echo will recognise straight away. I promised you the day that you came to me that I would show you everything you needed to know to survive in this world, in this new life. And look at you now. And it goes Your on. secret, as you like to call it, will remain with me. But... You know I've always suspected you were not who you said you were the first day we met. And now you're a prince of this city of Melbourne. And the true capability and powers of a prince may vary between domain domain. I've seen it all from princes like Leslie who micromanage the entire city personally and other princes were more than a rubber stamp for their primogen. The question is going to be, Echo, It would be close to 6 a.m. now. The sun can just be trying to peak. Unfortunately, it means that Echo is going to have to stay at Isaac's. Uh, we will take, if that's all right with you, Jax, we will take five and come back to do your feed, and then we'll switch to the new day if you like. Cool. That would be great for a taller break. No problem. Yeah, we had a, a slight interruption in audio, so I think uh, the question was missed from Magic. So you just want to re-ask that question for the viewers, Magic, sorry. Okay, sorry, man. <laughs> that, that final, the final so, question, how, 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 yeah, like how she's going to rule. <laughs> so the, the, <laughs> that, the question was, yeah, how she was gonna what rule. kind of prince was she going to be? Was she going to be the rubber stamp, or was she going to rule the city as her own? There you go, chat. Sorry about that. That was my bad. And then I go and blood bond for the night. Because apparently I get around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>
What's up, chat? We are back. I was going to turn on that one. Bring Mr. Stub in. Look, there he is. Sweet. So, Mr. Stub, just got a couple of things to resolve, and then we're going to start on the new day, and you can be jumping in back then. Right. Are we good? Are we good? Should be good. Everyone should hear everybody. I don't think I pressed the wrong button. Excellent. So, Zane, uh, you just flipped me a message before saying you're going to be doing some searching on the interwebs in the dark, deep, yep, yep. black web. <laughs> um, you are going to need to make a roll for me now. Once again, I always say this, you guys tell me if you think you can do a roll of a, a different style of roll that you think would suit better. Um, but I feel this would be a intelligence technology for you. Absolutely. And you're looking okay. for, for what you are looking for, you're going to need some pretty high numbers. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. <laughs> I, I, I'll give you an exact. I want at least eight. Nine would be better for you. So is, you can burn willpower can, was, to re-roll yeah. three. I was just going to say the same thing. So if you burn at one willpower uh, point, you can re-roll three dice. But you can't so re-roll uh, hunger uh, dice. People can buy Zane the black dice in the chat as you, well. You got there. Is that two guys? <laughs> um, so at the moment, so, okay, we'll use the willpower. <laughs> Don't forget to mark out your willpowers you've used too. No. Can use another one. You can burn them away. <laughs> How badly do you want the information, Zane? <laughs> yeah, right. Another, so, uh, up, oh, up to three, or yes, up to three. Yep. Once again, you can't roll blood dice on willpower, though. Yeah, your blood dice stay as they are. Okay. So that's all right. All right, la burn on the last one. <sighs> And okay, so one, uh, two crits, um, two normal, and three normal on the blood die. So two crits, so that's, that's four. four plus two normal, which is six, and nine, nine that gives them nine total of nine. All right, okie dokie. I will get to you what you find out. Other than that, It'll, that's worth all, all he will find is the the Australian history. He won't have anything prior to that. I understand. I have it covered. That's a pretty big dice pool. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're going to jump to uh, Jack. So you're going to do your feed before in night as well. Yep. Um, which is just a, just simple, just basically essentially chase someone down as I normally do. But um, the my main focus was to was the conversation with Pip, something I wanted to give him before. Okay, sweet. The end before I do take off and go for that, uh, go for food. So we'll do the conversation and then we'll just do a quick um, like a yep. roll off. Yeah, cool. no worries. So basically, yeah, um, Jackson's turned uh, literally says, says to Pip, look. I'm going to take a risk here with, with you, Pip, and hope that my feelings about you are correct. Um, in the glove box, uh, just reach into the glove box. There's a folder in there. Take it with you when you go home. It's read. something to read. It is. It is something to read. It's a whole bunch of things. And I'll be giving him the folder that I received from my guys um, that I'd received previously uh, and the stuff I got from Van Diemen. Okie dokie, I'll have to dig that up to send it to him as well. Yep. So that... I uh, hope it has good character development and, and, and backstories. There's some names you might it's recognize. Important. There'll be a couple of names there you might recognize. But it, it, it... I, I thought Echo was the writer. <laughs> I, I didn't write it, but... It's not. It's not from oh. me. It's. It's. I say you'll. You'll understand when you read it, and I'll know what I need to know 
what's the outcome of of what happens after? Oh, okay. So I should I should read this before I read anything else. Then uh, you've got time. I mean, well, someone. Uh, are you able to get back to Elysium on your own tomorrow? Or do you need an? I can come pick you up if you want, or we can organise someone to come and get you. No, I, I, I can, I can get there. It's, it's, it's fine. Okay. Um. As I said, Pip, I, I intend to honour Leslie's wishes, and I will be there for you when I can. If you ever need help establishing sh sh a feeding pattern. Should we go get Leslie at Shim? I mean, we don't. He... We don't really know where he is. There's a lot of I houses get the feeling in Melbourne. Mary Wade's more important. I think so. Somehow. I think so. At this point, I mean, tomorrow night we can let Vinteco know what what you saw. Definitely, she needs to know, as does the rest of the coterie. I mean, that's up to you. Yeah. What I think is the new prince. She needs to know. But Mary Wade is very important. We need to get her back, and we need to deal with the SI. Mm. I'm going to enjoy myself when that happens. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's that's what I do. And I hope we all I hope we all get through it. Because as you say, yeah, we're, we're all I friends. Read this before I die, then. <laughs> I I hope you don't. I mean, you're kind of already. Dead, but, uh, semantics. But you know oh. what I mean. But just just take that and uh, and don't forget your um your beautiful uh, roach. Yeah. They're house. so lucky. My house isn't that nice. It needs more books. It's actually, the bar doesn't really have. It reminds have me. Have a library in it must show you my library at some point i mean i don't look like a reader but i do have a rather extensive library i think you'd enjoy some of the the books that you'd find there more a lot of a lot more history than novels and such but there are some a lot of uh world history hmm. it's an interesting artifacts is it organized by Dewey? I mean, if you're going to do um, it, you have to do it right. Actually, I honestly couldn't tell you. Pip. I haven't actually been in my library for quite some time. I've been relatively busy, but I would be more than happy for you to come and reorganize the library if, if that would make you happy. Give you something yeah, to do. Yeah, I think I better. It's, it's, it's not right. You can't just have books everywhere willy-nilly. It's not right. Oh, I'll, I will make sure that we get you onto that as soon as possible. Right now, I think I should drop you off, and, and I, I really need to eat before the sun comes up. Mm. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Okay, thanks for the, the reading material, Mr. Spencer. No problem. <laughs> so with that, you drop him off and you make your stalking attack. So just going to give me a couple of rolls here before yeah, we right. switch into the next day. So uh, you can chase someone down in a park, I assume, very similar yeah, to the previous very similar gotta... period. Normally that's my normal stalking ground is looking for like a, maybe even an early morning jogger or someone that may have been let, like someone's gotten drunk and has staggered through the park and has passed out or something like that. But generally I like to wake them up first and chase them down. No worries. I'll get you two sets of rolls. So the first one will be stamina survival. Stamina survival? Not made that one before. No. It's not a bad roll for me. It's not great, but it's not bad. Um, for point of reference, I will have uh, rapid reflexes up. Can you use rapid reflexes? Which I believe is a free thing. Just increase my speed and increase your reflect. Speed, yep. Basically, increase your reflexes. So uh, just check rapid reflexes. Jacks, right. Yeah, yep, sweet as. No, so you can add your add uh, celerity. Yeah. Nice awesome. to that. Yep. Ooh, four, five, six, seven, eight successes on that. With a, no with a crit, but it was not on the blood dice, so not a message. 
So finding someone, isolating them, chasing them down, make them feel scared, easy enough. And the second is strength, strength melee or strength brawl, your choice. Yeah, I think they're both the same. Yeah, they're both. Uh, yeah, they're both the same. So. Good as. Works out about right. And same diff if you've still got your um, rapid reflexes yep. up, celerity can be added to the pool, along with those those blood dice. Okay, that's a messy crit. One, two, three, four, five. It was actually five lower on more dice, a messy, but a messy, a messy crit, crit, yeah. Okay, that was scary. so, so we, you chase this person down. Not so much a runner at the time, but a runner now. And you basically fold them in, pull them down, and now with the messy crit, you're going to have to give me a willpower check. Willpower? Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't have good willpower. I like the idea of a messy crit. Oh, yeah. Being... No, I failed on that. Okay. You're going to give me a description of, first, this is a female, mid-40s. Not a jogger. She looked like she might have been doing some sort of early morning yoga. Maybe on her way back from swimming, her hair was wet. You're going to give me a description of how you accidentally kill her. Uh, I think it would be the usual. I would obviously let her know that I was there, that I was, in, that I was not a nice person. She would run. Um, I think if obviously if I'm not in control as control as I normally would be. I would say emotions are running high with what I know or what I think I know. And that's playing on my mind, which is just making the blood boil just a little bit stronger than usual. And I would hit her probably unusually hard. I would say breaking a few bones in the process. And then I'd, I'd almost literally just tear her throat out. Yeah. So I think that's it. I think you're right. What you think you know, you've, you've riled up. It's nearly sunlight. You're in a hurry. You hit her hard. You don't intend on drinking her dry, but when you hit her hard and you feel the, the bones break in that, you know, oh, it's just too far, and you drink her dry, which will put you... In a stain? Yeah, she's going to give you a stain. It's also going to put you at zero hunger for the first time, I believe, for you. Yes, indeed. So you have no hunger... For the rest of this night, at least. <laughs> Just, it's only like, you know, only like a few hours. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or an hour or two. Um, other than that, we are going to switch to... And the, what about any wounds? Uh, so well? I've, got, can... I've got two abrogate, abrogate, aggravated and a superficial. So we can work... God, if I can uh, speak properly. Jesus. <laughs> on the next morning, it's all that uh, you guys get a chance to rouse your blood and we'll see if you want to okay. heal wounds then. Cool. So we will switch to that next morning. Um, now, a couple of things first. Anyone who's used willpower resets. You can reset your willpower back to maximum. So any willpower you used at the previous evening, which most of it was used in the previous evening for a couple of you, or one of you. Um, also, now's the chance. Uh, and you can do, so just so you guys are aware, and I think we've been over this before, but just as a reminder, you can do superficial damage every sort of turn. You, if you want to rouse the blood, you can heal superficial damage. As far as aggravated, you can only heal one aggravated a night, and it costs you three rouse checks. So we'll go around the, the table, starting with Aaron, since he's just joined us. Aaron, uh, you would be waking up. Now, you have left the group to do something. Gangrelish, you'd have another job under your, under your hood that you wanted to get out of the way. And so you... We'll hopefully be catching up with the group sometime on this evening, being the Monday evening. Um, do you wish to heal some of your damage? Yes, I have uh, two of the bad two, ones. Two aggravated, yep. And, so, and I think you've got two superficial as well, do you? Or is it just, uh, no. just, just the two aggravated? Yeah, just the two aggravated because the, I got to shrug off the superficial because of toughness. Ah, uh, cool. That's I right. remember right. You probably did, yep. Yeah. And, and because Jack's put himself in front of you. Jumped in yeah. the way at the time. That's yeah. cool. Not too, too, um, so you got two aggravated. So if you want to heal, or you're going to heal one of those, give me those three rouse checks. See if you get hungrier while you heal it. Uh, two successes and a fail. 
so the way and we've been over this before i believe the way i read this is and this is the way i'm playing it um you succeed but with that one fail you're going to get one point hungrier mm-hmm. excellent now so at three at three correct you feel this the scars or somewhat wounds that are open on you begin to stitch back together and you feel a little better for it but as you push the blood through to those wounds that beast in your mind is like yep could have really done with a decent feed hadn't got there yet zane are you wishing to heal some damage i think you're probably the most in need of it (laughs) Aggravated? You're silent, my friend. Um, hmm. Yeah, there, there's a lot there. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try. <laughs> okay, so, so rouse check. Uh, so three blood dice. Well, rouse check three times. It's the basics. <laughs> Nothing, pass, skull. Okay, so <laughs> you're in the same boat. You get one point hungrier, which puts you back at four. But you heal one aggravated wound. So you still have three aggravated wounds. And the beast in your mind is just whispering back, we feed off those bags, but we are always hungry still. Maybe it's time to change our diet. <laughs> uh, we'll Stop go. talking in my head. Nope, that's not it. I don't that's, do that. That's the usual talking in your head, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Echo, do you wish to solve some of your roll, damage? Roll three for the aggravated she's got. Nice. All right. Oh, three successes beautiful you get no hungrier very lucky and you remove one aggravated damage all right that's it for me isaac same question for you yep we'll be healing up the aggravated go for gold uh one success two fail okay so you get you're at four hunger now i believe correct me if i'm wrong yeah, actually, that does. Puts you at four hunger, and you... And that also you. activates my floor. Ah, and and so, now, tell us, Isaac, what happens <laughs> as you get this point hungrier, this one point extra hungrier? And so, he, as he wakes up, he um, knows that he was... Um, he's... Uh, um, was injured from the, from the bomb blast, so he tries to will the power of the blood to um to heal and while while he's uh he's healing it's just the the something just doesn't go right and he just doesn't feel <laughs> as good maybe maybe because of the ritual something's just taken more out of it than than usual but he starts bleeding in a stigmata fashion blood coming out of his eyes blood coming out of his ears blood starting to come out of his wrists as well as um just uh from his feet so So as you grow hungrier you still heal the damage i take it or does it not heal as much well, it's the rouse check, so I, I passed one and failed two. So okay, so you yeah, so you, your damage is this uh, aggravated damage is heal, but you just get that much hungrier, and the beast within you just roars, and as it does, that blood drips in the way you described from your your eyes. Very yeah, very stigmata it sounds. So leaving you to to clean up before you head out for the day. Hope you didn't get any on those expensive suits, Isaac. Mm, no, not yet. But um, <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 knowing that he is that hungry, he will first of all um, go back to 
the bookcase and just pull out pull out a book and just flips a few pages and pulls out a vial that's in one of the pages and he yes. just drinks it down good and what so what's your blood potency how many points do you get of healing from that ah sorry uh, hunger hunger uh, I have a blood potency of two, so I believe that means hunger-wise. Um, I think that cures you for two. No, that's only nope. for healing superficial damage, so it'll just be... Um, Okay, I'll, I, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of it's quite, kind of questionable because it is a vial. So I would probably classify that under as a bag blood. Okay, so you just get half the normal. Yeah, half the hunger. Yep. So we'll remove that. Uh, hunger, so you'll be down to hunger. Three on four, so three. And They'll just... only take it down three this time. To three. All right. Um, he will then take an opportunity to go to find one of uh one of the occult groups that's nearby, and will feed. He would leave before he goes. He will leave a a note uh for Echo just to let her know that he's needing to feed. Good as gold. I'll jump to your feed too soon, but we'll uh, just That's get fine. The, uh, damage from Pip and Jax as well. So, Pip, are you going to heal any damage this this evening? This evening? Yeah, I'll heal my aggravated. All right, give us those three rouse checks. Uh, ooh, two um, critical successes. That's not nice. a fail. Now, not sure on the uh, rouse check whether the critical successes mean Crits don't, all. don't matter on the, <laughs> so on the heal test. Yeah. <laughs> even though you're yeah. rolling three dice it's classified one dice is classified one as one singular roll yeah correct so two successes but it's still pretty good for you you heal your aggravated damage and only get one point hungrier putting you at two yes so the beast whispers within but it's it's kind whispers it's happy that you fed the way you fed the previous night it wants more it always wants more it's weird you are new to this it's becoming nagging almost that voice in your head you think you've just had a feed last night but now you're hungry again what's going on Shh, i'm trying to read quiet quiet Jax, you're at hunger zero. I'm but at you hunger do have... one. Uh, I have uh, Methuselah's thirst, so I cannot, oh, you have be, I cannot be slaked by human blood. So my Thank hunger would have that. remained at one, not zero, even Sorry, with I... the death of the human. I forgot about the floor, so that's fine. I forgot too until just, oh, just now, so. But yeah, so Good I'm eye, still at hunger one. That. So you are at hunger one, but you have two aggravated damage. Yes, I'll heal. Oh, uh, the superficial I can heal with my blood potency. Uh, but the aggravated, I will definitely rouse the blood for. And yeah, no, I'm um, only one success. One success. So you get two points hungrier, making you three. Three, but you get rid of that aggravated. So you, yeah, same thing. You, you've only just killed, and you have killed the night before, making you feel as bad as it does. The beast in your mind just says, more. I want more. And Kill I'd, more. I'd probably listen as well after the night before, failing that willpower and obviously being bruha and just being still relatively upset and angry. So I'd probably go out looking for food before heading to Elysium as well. Okay, sweet. So, uh, so two of you heading out for food. So Isaac... You're going to one of the occult hangouts, and we'll we resolve these pretty quick with just a couple of dice rolls too, if that's all right with you guys. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just make it quick and easy. Yep. Yeah. No drama. Um, just give me, and I'm just going to tell you a pool number now because I've mm -hmm. got your character sheets up in front of me. Yep. Give me a pool of 
seven dice uh, for both of you. Actually, it's pretty seven. yeah, seven dice. Yep. Including oh. blood or just in break. Including the blood dice. You only need yep. four successes. Exactly four. One, two, Wait a three. Can, can I do hunting as well? Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Do the same thing. Uh, your pool, uh, your pool will also be seven. Seven as well. Yeah, I didn't even look at your character sheet. I'm fucking. Let's just do it across the board. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Four successes. <laughs> hey, uh, what did you get, Isaac? Sorry. Three. Three. One less. <coughs> so those of you with the four successes, easy enough hunt. Easy enough to get what you would normally get, and easy to sate that hunger by the usual points. And I check your system. Um, some of you are two, some of you are one point. Uh, for you, Isaac, it was a little harder to find what you were after. It wasn't so willing and giving this time around. Uh, you will just make one willpower check for me, please. Okay. Two. Two. Even though it took you longer, maybe you'll arrive late to the group, but you get your hunger sated as you would normally. Chasing down, hunting, killing the prey, or in your case, I guess befriending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, you are, your hunger is sated for whatever points you would normally remove. Uh, we won't go into the details of that. Do the group meet together at the did you all agree to meet somewhere at the gangster's paradise again I would... yep. yes okay uh aaron would he have been sent a phone message or something to the, f the effect of where you would be i would assume so if he wasn't there i guess uh would any of the rest of you have tried to send him a message via the cell phone or any other way that's what i'm asking <laughs> yeah. okay echo yeah i okay. would have tried to get Sam to send <laughs> sweet so Aaron you receive a message that they uh, wish to meet upon waking at the gangsters paradise bar where we will scene switch to there now <laughs> all of you uh, would you choose a booth echo because you're you're in charge here you make big decisions at the moment so would you have chosen another booth same booth as the night before or a private room I thought I'd have, have a little private room with a table and stuff for us. Yeah. No worries. Someone Up has holes in his chest, yeah. <laughs> Upstairs through um, a nice carpeted, uh, banistered stairway and leads you to a section uh, not, not unlike all the similar makings below of the speakeasy. Um, leads you to a, a separate area where Leslie probably had his own secret meetings and with it all and as as far as the group's concerned you're all happy to be there i assume just a, yeah, again just for point of reference is is there a way in that would be less obvious for those of us that are obviously armed nathan would have pointed out extra ways for for you guys to get in i would assume um if if not echo would know anyway because he would have showed her um, okay. That's I don't so fancy yes, there that, are other ways I don't fancy Jackson want to walk through the main doors with a um a sword strapped over his back and maybe a couple of guns. I mean the guns are hidden, but Yeah, obvious weapons definitely uh, from the main guard point of view would not be allowed in, but if, if you guys are with the prince, they would they would nod and agree. Assuming you don't walk down the street with them, it's fine. Oh no, it's it's in the car. I... Take it out of the car when I get there. No problem. So we we're in the room. I will leave it to you. Echo. Aaron. How good to see you. Just leaving a gift and running off the porch like you did. Yeah. Did you have a nice time? Well, Yes and no. A little suspicious leaving uh, uh, an explosive and then disappearing, wouldn't you think? Who left the explosive? You that did. would be you. 
That is why we are all pretty well fucked up right now. I don't remember doing it, so no. But if you say so, yeah, okay. How do you think but you no, got that? that? Pointing at the, the, the obvious wound on him. I don't know. I've had a busy week. Well, yeah, a busy week. Kind of. Um, all these years of kindred maturity and yeah is what you've got to say. Oh. Well done. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So at this point, probably Isaac has probably reached because he's a little bit late and he's walking in the door. He's on the phone and <laughs> yeah. um, he's just relaying a message. Yes, just let Ms. Barnett know that I want to reserve a book. It is... Dewey Decibel number 823.914. It is of the uttermost urgency that she gets that message and then he hangs up. Isaac, you're entering the bar through the general entrance. Um, the others have come in before you. you they have a an area probably not to Leslie's taste, something maybe Nathan has added after Leslie's demise or maybe he's had it put in ever so recently. But there is a television, an LED, LCD-style television up on the wall above the bar. It's running some news footage. And as you walk in, saying what you're saying on your phone, as you hang up, you hear, it's quiet, but you hear it, your senses are keen. And says the woman on the news shows some footage behind her. It says vicious attack in Central North Coast around 4:30 last night in the laundromat. Video camera footage shows a thin man, small stature, maybe five foot three, brutally ripping apart a woman as she was asleep. The man was seen leaving, covered in blood, bounding out on all fours. And the footage then changes, and you see this grainy camera footage of a small wiry figure. Uh, covered it down his chin with blood, down his ripped, torn clothes as he sort of leaves the doorway of a laundromat. And from there, a young woman sees you and says, oh, Mr. Graves, uh, office upstairs, follow me. Mm, very well. <laughs> and she leads you into the room. Uh, as the others uh, echo as you're talking and Aaron is uh, back and forthing, Isaac is led in, and I shall leave you to carry on. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay, I'm just getting told off again. Yeah. Um, news report, vicious attack, laundromat. I was super gentle. What? Did you eat someone, Pip? Only a, only a little bit. I, uh, I was there. Uh, and there's no... The footage was very grainy, so there's no distinct... Yeah, Pip doesn't feed like that. On Pip. Yeah, but Pip. But that needs to be possibly yeah. cleaned up um, it definitely wasn't so Pep I was there like with, with, she was still alive when we left with that I'll at try and get into the security cameras and all that so Zane you're, yeah sorry Zane you're, so you're pulling out your um, laptop yeah. and, that you're carrying with you and you just get into the cameras right I, yeah, yeah, so sweet. roughly what time were we at the laundromat would have been about 4.30 it was around about 4.30 yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, around 4.30, but I, I said, that's not Pip. That's more my style, but I watched Are you him. sure? Because the beast is not I was standing <laughs> right there. My eyes are, aren't that bad, Isaac. Uh, Zane, you give me an intelligence technology. You're only going to need two for this one. I'm not doubting. I'm just saying that if this is a possibility... For our new prince, it's not looking good. Well, you followed. 
six. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, not, not that I was looking for someone that was following us. I mean, what, what reason would what they channel? have to follow us? What channel is the news on? Uh, we'll say channel one. All right, so I would go to channel one's website to actually just play the news report so I can actually see it for myself. And before you even get there, Zane, you pull it up, you've got the footage right in front of you. You've actually accessed the raw camera footage from the laundromat. <laughs> um, and you all, all can see it as uh, Zane, I assume you play it. Yeah. Um, Does play, it from where, play, play it from when they enter to when they leave. Okay. You see, he rewinds the footage back, goes through it. You see, don't see Jack's in the building at all. You see a figure come towards the door and then the camera fuzzes out pretty much as just like a shadowy figure through the door. And then it's like he disappears and then there's nothing. And then same thing, sort of shadowy fuzziness on the camera again and that figure exits, nothing clear at all. And within one minute later, less than probably sort of that 40 second mark, as it, lights of a car can see being pulled away as, as what you presume is Pip exiting, a small stature man looks right up at the camera directly. You've seen him before, Jax. That's what I was going to ask. Is is this the the little little this is terror, this terrorist urge. from from the Elysium? And yeah, yeah you awesome. watch him walk straight past the camera, looking at it. Then you just see an arm sort of wave past the camera as he's ragdolling this person. He doesn't rip the arm off. He's just ragdolled the person. But you just see the arm in the camera view. Then you see a spatter of blood. There's no audio on this footage. And then he walks facing away from the camera towards the door. But he's sort of half hunched, very golem Aaron, from Lord of the Rings. Aaron would recognise him as well. Both Aaron uh, and I Aaron, saw him. That's right. Aaron yeah, was both with you Aaron and I Aaron. saw him yep. quite clearly Aaron. in Elysium. So yeah, Aaron, and that and that's where you sort of notice he's got almost the claws like you have, Aaron, when you change to your form or extend claws from your form. He's doing something similar, and then he turns back, looks directly at the camera, and there's just blood all down his face and neck as he bounds or leaps like an animal out of the door a clear breach of the masquerade as well as knowing the cameras on him and that's pretty much where the footage goes back to just being an empty i'd get uh, zane to rewind dramatic. it back and pause it on the face and just turn to echo at that point and say say hello to mr scourge <sighs> I was worried it'd be tiramisu, but it's, it's the scourge. Well, welcome to your inheritance. Yay. <laughs> that is going to be a problem. Yeah, since the only person that apparently could control him is dead. Potentially. Maybe. Well, Speaking of which... Look, Look, we haven't got any stock standard like like hard proof so well, he's dead just hold that hold that thought um okay. pip Heal. would you like to toe tell them what Ankle. you saw last night before we left elysium uh, she's never going to get to read that book now um Oh, the, it it looks like maybe maybe the old prince is still still alive with um with Jeremy bleeding him into a bucket. I asked he wants his power. I asked Pip last night to concentrate if he could concentrate on Jeremy and saw that in a basement somewhere obviously no way of knowing exactly where or potentially when it's been at least a week since Prince was last seen alive so but well, I did some thinking about the, the vision I 
I took some notes. I think it might be um, South Footscray. It's sort of like a slum type area. Um, old old housing done up in like an 80s style. So it'd still be a lot of houses though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Needle in a haystack, I think. Not necessarily. You've got a blood hand. And Zane. Well. And uh, there's how many hands we got? Wait, wait, wait a minute. The 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 when you last tracked the prince, it took you to the graveyard. Took us to the uh, tunnels beneath. Do the tunnels lead all the way to Footscray? They lead out in several places through the graveyard and around the old Elysium. They were the ways in and out that most people didn't know about. Apparently some people knew about some passages that we didn't know about, so... Yeah. Didn't you have a previous vision, Pip, of Marco or uh, Jeremy feeding off others and then making them feed and then feeding off them? Isn't that kind of similar to draining someone for power? I feel the like best way to get thing. someone's power is to do the cardinal sin of the Camarilla. Well, I know some of you are dead set on going to see uh, Mary Wade. Perhaps Zane and I can look into this scourge. Have we had uh time and place that we are doing this thing uh, with Mary Wade. I know we had to let Sarah know. We did it's do already that. been done. Yeah. Have we decided when we're going to make our move? I don't think we had an option on that one. It was kind of set for us by um yeah. I do believe this is out of character that we worked out our battle plans with the primogens, so we would have probably set a time with I would them have, to I would have, hope so. <laughs> I would hope we would have done that correlate. at that time. So, Prince Echo, when was that set for, and when are we going? That was for PM. Because what night we were at Monday, aren't we? Or Sunday? <laughs> so, oh. so I, I I could be wrong here. Okay, <laughs> you're at Monday. Uh, you're on the Monday evening as the sun goes down. I believe it was set for the Wednesday. Did we say last week? Yeah, and, so uh, I had to let Sarah, had to let know, Sarah know by Tuesday, yeah. and then she was going to if she didn't hear from me by the Tuesday she was going correct so that's my understanding as well if if we are wrong well then that conversation's been had and that's when it's going to be <laughs> prince gets final say does she not correct she does. We, we changed everything it's now getting done next thursday <laughs> at, at one that's uh, on day. <laughs> because you know reasons do we want to retrace this Scourge's steps to see if he's following us and see if we can hunt him down before Wednesday? I guess it's a, a matter of which is the more important quest, if you will. I mean, the Scourge is going to continue doing what it's doing 
regardless of obviously the mass grade because he really don't give a shit and he's you know, out of control just a thought if he was Leslie Taylor's pet don't we have intel with Mr. Nathan just it depends it depends that. on did the prince let Nathan know about his about little we ask pet. Him and find out? They will know it's... At the same time, are they able to have a... I don't know, what you do to it? What? We know nothing about what this guy is capable yeah. of. Hey, we know he can Maybe throw... Maybe Nathan and the crew might be able to provide certain <laughs> He's a messy intel eater. to be able to help that. We know that. <laughs> He's extremely strong. We know that also. But I agree with Isaac. I mean, Nathan was part of the prince's coterie. If anyone was to know anything about the Scourge, it would be him. Right, isn't Nathan somewhere around? Is because he's running this place when Echo's not here. If I remember Aaron, right. could you go out down there and get Nathan for me? Right. Yeah, he's a good boy. I was going to say that. Zane, <laughs> you can come with. As I <laughs> got him by the back of the neck. And <laughs> <laughs> no role necessary. <laughs> yeah, you guys. <laughs> okay. And you guys exit the room in tow looking for Nathan, who isn't hard to find as he's usually <laughs> down on the main floor. If he's not in a booth, he's doing some book work in an office. Um, but yes, you come across him quite quite quickly within a few moments. This is I, Aaron. Nice to see you again. Though you do smell up the property a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I just, you know, it give you that. Wet. I give you that earthy aroma. You know, it's you need it in this place, and it's a good musk. Now, we actually need some information. Oh, do you? Of a of a previous management, uh, and a individual that is a pretty messy eater that may have been caught on camera last night. Ah, huh. hold one moment, and he <laughs> opens his jacket and he pulls out a small rose and he goes just and he sort of takes the top of your leather jacket you wear and he pokes it into like a pocket or a buttonhole <laughs> or something and goes there I, that doesn't I've got help the, uh, it doesn't help it doesn't <laughs> and it doesn't really you know leather oh my blush of life really leather <laughs> skull and crossbones shirt what were you saying rose. anyway about this Scourge killing people. Where is he? Previous oh, Scourge. Yes. Well, unless Echo is named another, he's still the Scourge. Maybe, I maybe you guys are aware you're in a bar with humans right now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if right. Nathan wants to keep on talking out in the public, that's what... <laughs> I, I did say he could, could be down in his back office working with that. Not down in the public bar. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that, that, that would be also bad for me in the public bar. Yeah, you're 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 kind of like Swiss cheese at the present moment, aren't you? That's right. Um, and currently at full hunger. That is oh, a, yeah. my that's a that's a relatively good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been through the public bar into Nathan's oh, office, shit. asked him a quick question. He's popped a rose into your jacket, uh, Aaron, and as you walk through the bar, Zane. I want you to give me a willpower oh, roll, please. No. I hate the prince's job. I hate the prince's <laughs> job. Well, no one seems to follow your orders very well. <laughs> oh, so, no. Willpower, that, that's just straight die, isn't it? Just straight die, yeah. Yep. Cool. Two successes and one crit. Nice. Okay, that's enough to keep the beast at bay you are hungry you are if you could you would be salivating at the mouth because there is a few humans in the bar ghouls as well who are still human <laughs> nonetheless but um at nathan's office just far enough away from them asking the questions you ask 
I think both Nathan and Aaron can see the struggle. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my, the voices in my head just telling me to oh that smells so good still, still got my hand on the back of his neck and I was like <laughs> by any chance do you have some bags that this one could chew on while we have this discussion yes but, what, why have bags that they smell so good shut up no Zane but let's shall we take this upstairs to where you are currently meeting maybe we go back through yeah the, bar? the prince would probably know no is there another way to get there without taking him through the bar because hmm. he seems a bit peckish there is i mean our our previous prince was not silly he has plenty of secret tunnels and passages follow me and he takes you through the back of his office uh through a narrow stairway which is almost like between walls and to the next floor and then he a knock on the door behind the current table that the rest of the group is in as Nathan knocks quietly, waiting for the answer of the uh, prince. Come in. And he brings Aaron and Zane with him, and he says, so we have questions about the previous scourge, and that is we will have to call the game, <laughs> because I have a five o'clock get up tomorrow, so... <laughs> Well, here we go, team. Another great, another great session from everyone. Thank you very much uh, for participating once again in our Sunday night's Vampire Masquerade. Um, yes, thanks for joining us in that last half too, um, Adam. Good, good to have you back, man. Yeah, it's it's always good to be here when I can actually be here. <laughs> Are we going to do the old round the tables before I run away? Yeah, might as well. Um, you you pick. Yeah, man, let's, start with, let's start with Aaron. Well, I'm going to work from the bottom of what I, excuse me, of what I see up <laughs> today. Uh, so Aaron first, he came in near the end. He didn't probably didn't see as much as the rest. Uh, I'd, I'd actually, I'd have to say the um, the description of uh, Isaac's little whatever the fuck that thing was <laughs> um, <laughs> when he found when he went into his four hungry his four hunger that. That was pretty cool and disturbing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sorcery is always a good one. Zane. Yay, on the backstory for Yanti. <laughs> more, more on Echo's past. Yay. <laughs> Not that my character knows anything about that. <laughs> uh, Jax. Uh, yeah, I, I just again, I think uh, the blood ritual, uh, with Isaac again, the description of that was all very cool. And, and I mean, I'm learning about all the clans while we're playing because I don't know much about many of the clans within the Vampire Masquerade. So, learning things like the blood ritual, what the obviously things that Tremere are, are, are able to do and other clans are able to do is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> dealing with Pip is always an absolute joy because Pip is so funny. Um, but yeah, I think just that conversation with Pip and Jax and <laughs> Zane bugging the crap out of everyone as usual. Zane with a lot to say this round too. Uh, Pip? Um, I'd have to say the scourge. And like <laughs> having, having him come in after we'd left, yeah. it's, it's got my head head spinning and just the description of it. And I'm like, oh my God, we've got so many things going on at once. I don't know how we're going to cope. <laughs> poor, poor Prince Echo is in charge of, of all the stuff and things of all the nut jobs in the nut job house. Oh <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, I mean, you guys only need to focus on what you want to focus on. Like I say, the story arc will finish when you guys, um, well, <laughs> when we get whenever there. you hit the main story arc. <laughs> Echo, uh, eight words, I think. Uh, the book. Both Bogan and the magical socks. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite. I look forward to more books. <laughs> Definitely. The book titles are a highlight. Uh, magic. Oh, Isaac. Um, the willpower roll for Grim. 
the storytelling going, you went from one extreme to another, and I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, well, he's a Malky, so it completely makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, forget <laughs> that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so she's gone from one, it's like she's gone from that, the, the messy crit to succeeding on the willpower roll very, very closely. Um, yeah. The other thing that um, I, I really enjoyed was... Um, Jackson speaking with Pip towards the end and sort of showing that uh, I've I've kind of messed up and I'm trying to make amends for it and and the fact that he's also uh, open up to Pip to the point where he's saying there's no one that I really trust so which kind of if we've been following the Jackson Spencer story, it all sort of, you know, it's all sort of ties all in with um, with that whole trust issue thing. So I thought that was uh, that was that was very cool. I mean, he could always trust Zane. I swear, Zane, Zane's <laughs> honest. <laughs> yeah, he could trust trust Zane with fucking nothing. <laughs> um. So yeah, good game, guys. Everyone played so well, and I yeah trying to make sure we get around everyone's pieces so the nights aren't moving quickly but that's fine i'm not in a rush so if i did cut you off for um cup of tea break or whatever i apologize but you can always come back to that stuff no hassle at the Um, end of the day it is what it is man we we play when we can play and we play as long as we need to for for that and i said there's no rush on this we keep going until we finish so sweet so lastly for me i think my favorite standout and i got a couple here but my favorite one is the uh Christian from Pip about the person in the laundry. Will they taste like laundry detergent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yep. And obviously the Roach Motel was cool. Um, Isaac, you admitting your floor, I was really, you know, that was a really good thing. And then obviously it reminded Jacks of his as well. So yeah, yeah, just getting the a few stain. new things. Yep, and the stain, uh, getting the new new things in there as well from you guys. Um, Aaron, as they enter the room, and he's like, oh, it's okay. I'm just getting told off again. So the <laughs> scenario. <laughs> and all the Dewey Decimal mentions and book mentions. <laughs> so good. So good. Righto. All done and dusted. Thank you, everybody, for tonight. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Baz, you need to take off. Uh, yes, please sorry, do. I'm um, I've up. got a few things I've got to uh, mention Let's before we finish up and raid. So, cheers, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for your story. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, so uh, again, just again, a thank you from me uh, for Baz and his storytelling, and to the players for joining us again for another another session of the Vampire Masquerade. Um, coming up uh, this week, obviously tomorrow night we're back into the map stuff. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, doing some more Curse of Strahd maps. I think we're about halfway through. If uh, if I'm not including Castle Ravenloft, I'm probably about a third the way through. Um, I am seriously considering doing the castle ravenloft stuff it is a massive map but i'll definitely look at that at some point uh wednesday night uh we are doing a session zero again on wednesday night but this is for the lost minds of Findelva module which is upcoming at some time in the future will be after we get through with roasted chickens mini adventure which is a wild mount dark star which will be starting next wednesday so this coming Wednesday, we're going to do a session zero and a, and a run, a brief run through a foundry for uh, a couple of the newer, newer, newer people to the foundry, and just the mods that I'm running, which have been different to maybe other uh, games that they've looked at. So we'll be doing that Wednesday, Thursday, back for some more maps. Um, Friday, no idea whether I'll maybe a bonus stream. We'll see what happens. Possibly said as well. But um, I'm always around for playing games if I'm not streaming. So um, if you are available and want to play games, just hit me up. Um, next uh, Wednesday as well, or this coming Wednesday, sorry, I almost forgot. One o'clock in the afternoon, New Zealand Standard Time, Wednesday, I will be appearing on Dice Legends channel, uh, doing having a bit of a chat with Vahid, um, which is the DM for the Dice Legends crew. Uh, he's reached out to me and asked me if I would like to uh, pop over there and, and ha- jump and have a chat with him to talk D and D, Kiwi RPG stuff, and all that sort of sort of would be kind of cool. So definitely, if you guys are available, I know many of you'll be at work uh, at one o'clock in the afternoon. But if you are around and and you want to come hang out, come and hang out with us over there. Uh, I'll be av- putting it up and putting a link into the Gilded uh, sometime during the week, and it'll be up on the Twitter and everything as well. 
So definitely come and hang out with us for that. Uh, failing that, we sh we're going to raid uh, Zeit Poltergeist, who's also doing Vampire the Massacre raid. Uh, we raided them last week as well, but we're going to raid them again this week, because why not? Um, and we'll hope to see you guys back again for the next session, this next uh, this coming Sunday for session three of Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, will the hounds deal with the scourge? Will they, I mean, we're definitely going after Mary Wade, that much is uh, definitely evident. Will we find out exactly what has happened to the prince or not? So many things that we're dealing with right now. Um, so many, so many little little twists and turns in the stories. It's a lot of fun. I've been really enjoying it. So we're looking forward to see you guys next week for that as well. So in saying that, we're going to say good night, and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow for some maps. Bye bye.